Hi! So quite some time ago, somebody in a comment actually asked me how you can make objects that seem really far away, sort of like a background, but in 3D. And today I'm going to show you two techniques of how you can achieve an effect like that. Now what you see here, I can just look around since I'm in the editor and you can see that there is this night sky or space scene, maybe we're in deep space or something, uh, all around me. And this is what's called a skybox in many game engines. Godot calls it a bit different, but let's take a look. So if we go into world environment, then there is an environment we can select. We just create a new one. Now you can see everything is black, nothing to see anymore. And what we can do is we can go into the background, which currently is set to clear color. We can set it to custom color, so everything just becomes whichever color we set it to. And that's the simplest type of background. But instead we can go into sky and set either a procedural sky, that's sort of the default in Godot. So you see this kind of skyline in the distance and this greenish grayish void below. There's also a sun and that is procedurally generated. But we're not doing any of that. We want to set a custom image. So we're going on a panorama sky. And for panorama sky, let's click this, we can actually select an image of our own. To see how this works for now, I'm just gonna go with the Godot icon. And now we can see the Godot icon basically gets wrapped in a sphere around our character. And that's also what's a bit different to other engines. Some engines actually use a box, so there are different sides to it. Godot uses an image wrapped around a sphere. So if you want to make this actually fit without this weird circle stretching at the top and this line here, your best bet might be to edit the image in a uh, 3D editing software like Blender if you want a free one. Blender is what I normally use. Or you can probably find some pre-made ones online. I grabbed one from online that isn't quite optimized. So this image here actually does work fine when rotating horizontally. But if we look too far up or down, we do notice some stretching here. So it's not quite mapped to a sphere, it's more mapped to a uh, cylinder, I guess. Anyway, you can definitely fix that in a 3D editing software, but this isn't a Blender tutorial, so maybe I'll go into that some other time, but not today. Instead, what I want to look at, let's just take a quick look of what this would actually look like. So I put some random objects around here just so we can see that we are actually moving. And if I speed up here a bit and I just keep moving and keep moving, the objects in the background just don't get any closer. The idea being, of course, that we have these uh, planets that are so far away that no matter how much we move towards them, we won't really notice a difference. It's a bit like trying to walk towards the moon. You're not gonna ever get close enough to, uh, to actually see it get significantly larger. And this effect can be quite nice in a game, since it allows us to essentially set a background in 3D. This here is the one I used in the editor, so let's uh, just have a quick fly here, you see it's the same effect just with uh, much more distant objects because they're smaller. This here is of course much more efficient uh, in terms of rendering since it's just one texture. But there are some benefits to using the second technique. So how did this one work? Now if you see here we're already in the 2D editor, which uh, seems a bit weird, but let's see. So in the scene tree we have uh, our main scene, in this case it's actually a control node. This allows me to set two viewport containers underneath it, both occupying the entire screen. So with that we can render them behind each other and essentially make it seem like it's one scene when it really isn't. The main world, a bit more bland. Let's open it as a scene on its own. So the main world has these objects that we are actually supposed to interact with. This is what you would basically make your game in. It's also, since it doesn't have a background set, it just uh, renders the procedural background by default. And we can move around here, and that's basically all there is. But all of the magic really happens, because this camera here is synced to another camera. That one is in the background layer. If we go back here, the other viewport has the background. Now this camera here in the background never moves. It's just a stationary camera. I can go into the code real quick so you have a look, but basically all we're doing here is adjust the rotation. I'm going more into the code at the end. 
but for now let's go back into the 3D editor. So what this allows us to do is to use either these sprite 3Ds, which is basically 2D objects in 3D space. These actually work fine, since the camera isn't actually going to move. If it were to move, then uh, you would see them from the side like this, and it would be kind of strange. But as long as you're always looking straight at them, these are fine. For a bit more detail, you can use these uh, 3D objects, random meshes with whatever textures you want on them. The benefit of this, of course, is we can actually have animations on these things. So I can go here into the animator and let's just play and you can see we have here some rotation on this planet. Uh, it's just a pretty quick cheap animation because I didn't want to spend too much time on this. Anyway, so this one here is actually a bit curved to uh, be facing towards the camera when it's a bit higher up. I think uh, it depends on what you're going for, but both approaches are definitely possible. I kind of prefer the 3D meshes, which again gives us this whole thing with uh, 2D meshes and uh, 2D sprites and 3D meshes combined. The uh, sprites of course look pixelated because they are very low resolution compared to the size they are supposed to take up on screen. So in reality you would want to use higher resolution images for this. Anyway, how would we implement something like this? Let me just delete some things and then I can show you. Alright, so we are back in the 3D editor of the world. And we can see here the actual movement is controlled by this kinematic body, which is essentially our player. We could rename it, but whatever. And I just grabbed the script from the internet, so we're not gonna go about how this works. But what we do look at is the physics process function. Because in this function, essentially, it is where we are setting our rotation and with it the camera that's attached to us. If we look into the player real quick, the camera is just a child of the player, it doesn't have a script of its own. So whatever the player's position is, is currently also the camera's position. If you have a different setup, you probably want to uh, do this change in a camera script or something. Anyway, this is what we have here right now. So the line I have here is essentially just call a global signal script and emit the signal that the camera updated and passed the rotation. This is currently not possible, we don't have a global signal script. So let's make one. First of all, go in here, new script, call it global signals, I guess that's fine, whatever. Um, where is it? There it is. New script, all of the default stuff that gets generated, I am gonna get rid of. Don't care about it, actually don't even care about this because we do not need a ready function here. What we do need is a signal. So we call it camera updated, you can call it whatever you like, but uh, it should just be obvious what it's supposed to do. And of course we want to be able to pass this a value. So I'm just gonna say we pass it a value called rotation. We could set some more details here, but this should work fine in our case. So now to be able to use this signal, we can just go back into our kinematic body here, the player script and uh, activate this line again. So again, what we're doing is, let's see. Yeah, 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 it's gonna complain, but that's fine. But what we're doing is we call global signals. We use the emit signal function. We tell it the name as a string of our signal. So this is camera underscore updated, which is exactly what's written in here, camera underscore updated. And we pass it the rotation, which in this case is the rotation of the player. Careful here, if you are using a camera that moves differently from the player, make sure to pass the rotation of your camera. Okay, now why is this complaining? Because global signals is just a script down here that's not visible at all. Let's make it visible. Project settings, and I'm already on the auto lab, uh, auto loads tab, you probably start on general. So if we are here on auto load, we can just open this, look for the script, global signals, and it already gives us a suitable name. Usually it's gonna be fine. If you want it to be called differently in your editor, rename it here, add, and it's already enabled by default, so we're good to go. Now this here is gonna stop complaining after a bit. Sometimes it takes a moment to update because it's not constantly checking if you uh, just created this thing, but there we go, now it's working. So since this is in physics process, every single time the uh, physics engine updates, we are also updating the position of our camera. Now we want to go into our background. So if we go back into the test scene, I, I don't actually have them in here right now. I'm gonna show you what to do with them in a moment. First, we are treating every world on its own. 
So in the 3D editor we have this world that is now update, sending an update signal to the uh, global signal script. And we have this world which currently doesn't have any movement in it at all because uh, there isn't a player in it and it can't really do anything on its own. The camera is just set in space. Now, where do we have the camera? Here's the camera and we want to update the position of this camera or specifically not the position but just the rotation. So we need our ready function because we want to connect to the uh, signal of the global signal script. So we go global signals dot connect and indeed it's called camera update. It already re recommends us the correct signal so that's fine. We want to connect to this current thing we're in, our current uh, camera script. So we just say self, that's where we are. And now it wants us to pass whatever method we want to call whenever the camera is indeed updated. So whenever we receive this signal, we call some method. We can just uh, type an update bg cam or something like that. Call it whatever you like, but that's the uh, thing I'm going with. Since we need it exactly the same, I'm going to copy this, create this other function. And of course it gets a rotation. I'm going to call it rot for short. And then we can just say this camera's rotation is equal to rot. And with that, our camera should now update whenever the player in the world updates. To actually be able to see what's happening though, we need both of these scenes to be loaded at the same time. So let's get to it. So we need a viewport container. So actually we need two of these. So let's duplicate this one with control D or you can copy paste it, whatever you like. And then we need a viewport. It's gonna complain about something here. We get to that in a minute. I'm just gonna copy paste it in here. So we have two of them. Now each viewport is basically like its own area to render a camera on or something. So we want to set a size for it. 1920 by 1080 because it covers the entire screen in our case. This way it always renders exactly as much as our screen. Of course if you make a 4k game or whatever, set this as large as you need. Now the viewport currently doesn't have anything to render. So let's give it our background scene because it's the upper one. The upper one should be the background. Otherwise the background is the foreground. And now if we look here, we can actually see this render just fine. Next, let us do the same thing here. 1920 by 1080. And you see it actually overrides everything. We're gonna fix that in a minute. We need the actual world here. Put that in as a node. And that works fine. And now we can already, I think, see everything. Let's take a look. Let's give it a shot and see if anything still needs fixing here. Okay, it definitely still needs fixing. The reason being that currently we are only seeing things from the perspective of one camera. You also see it throwing a lot of errors down there. We do not need that. What do you mean the signal doesn't exist? Didn't we create it earlier? Update it. Oh, I forgot a D. Yeah. Uh, what did I write in the other script? There we go. It should still be broken, but it should be less broken. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't throw errors anymore, so that's nice. Good. Now to actually fix the viewports, because right now the 2D view is showing these things, but it's not actually showing them correctly. We want this to be its own world. This way, if we move our main player camera, it doesn't also get rendered to the other viewport. We only want one thing to be rendered on each viewport. So let's make these their own words. And that's fine. Now we actually only see the front one. So now we still need to give this a transparent background. This we can just enable here, transparent BG in the viewport. And with that, let's go into it again. The planets are now only being rendered on the background layer anymore and therefore don't move relative to us. All we can see is that everything else moves and they are just standing in the sky. We have this one here that uh, has its very basic rotating animation. And still I can move towards it for hours, it's never gonna get any closer. The lighting is set up a bit awkwardly right now because uh, a lot of things aren't actually visible. 
probably would look a bit nicer with multiple light sources, but uh, hey, it's just a quick preview anyway. So yeah, this is pretty much all you need to know to create this kind of effect. You can put all of kinds of objects, of course you can space them further apart or something. These are all very close to the camera. So if you want to create things that are much further away, just move them out a bit. And you can see them there much further in the distance. Other than that, nothing much changes. Position them however you like and see what kind of scenes you would like to create with this. This, this will, will be, be all for today. today. Bye. Bye.